Welcome to The Journey Home. My name is Catherine and I live in Nova Scotia, Canada. The following is a oracle reading for you, cards that I pulled that I will read fully from and without advertisement. Please subscribe, hit the like and enjoy your reading. This card pulled for you is from the Fairy Oracle by Brian Froud. Number 28, Penelope Dreamweaver, Inspiration, Magical Dreams, Visions. Weaver of dreams, bringer of visions, muse of artistic inspiration, Penelope weaves tapestries in the mind with threads of light, color, and sound. When she comes to us in dreams, we waken under her enchantment and rush for our paints or clay or other forms of expression. In this painting, Brian has shown us Penelope, his own inspiration fairy, but we each have we each have one who is more than willing to help us. Mine says to call her Grace, because she says she isn't exactly someone I deserve, just someone I'm lucky enough to have in my life. She plays hard, inspiring me, as does Penelope with Brian. Penelope says she is very pleased with Brian's results of her inspirations, but when I look, hopefully, at Grace to see what she thinks about me, she just shrugs her shoulders. Then she flashes me a wicked grin, so I think it is all right. Inspiration fairies like their jobs, but they get really bored when people don't pay attention to them. Then they sit around and file their fingernails while they think troublesome and mischievous thoughts. Sometimes they get exasperated enough to send us nightmares in an attempt to get us to wake up. These fairies and their sisters, the fairies of expression, work together as teams helping us in our creative endeavors. The fairies of inspiration sprinkle us with special inspirational fairy dust so that we come up with ideas, rather like fertilizing a plant. And you know what plants are fertilized with, Grace says. Then her sisters, the fairies of expression, help us to give form to our creat creativity, manifesting it with our own particular talents. Your message here is to seek visions and inspiration. Be aware that they are often subtle and require close attention. Fantasies, dreams, and daydreams are all places an inspiration fairy can contact us, but she can also pop up unannounced in the midst of the most ordinary activities in the bath, washing the dishes, driving the car, or anywhere else that our mind is half occupied and half running on idle. Pay special attention to unsought inspirations at this time. They have something wonderful to offer you, but it's up to you to catch them and bring them into reality. And as for your warning, you may feel that your creative expression is blocked or even dead. You may have been trying too hard, working too hard, this is a time to back off and do the things that renew and inspire you. Cut loose from the mundane world and give yourself time to enjoy your own fantasies and dreams. Then choose what you want to bring into manifestation and begin to create it, even if you think you can't. Creation is one of the primary factors in the maintenance of sanity. Humor is another so if you produce laughable results, you get two benefits for the one effort. Alternatively, you may have been ignoring your inspiration fairies prompting, turning away from your own creativity. When we deny expression to our creative impulses, our creative energy tends to sour within us, causing problems with health, relationships, and other aspects of life. Denial of the possibilities put forth by our creative imaginations or allowing only the destructive possibilities or creativity to be considered are also serious problems as it is a refusal to learn from our dreams. Perhaps someone in a state of denial or blocking is also discouraging our creative impulses or perhaps we are doing it to ourselves or others. If the first, the querent, must learn to disregard this bad influence. If the second, an immediate change of attitude is urgently needed at this time. Interestingly, Penelope and Grace tell us that whining about the unfairness of life instead of doing something about it to make it better is also linked with and a symptom of the suppression of one's 
creative energies. Before I read the second card for you, I just a reminder to please hit the like and help me beat those algorithms for every like that you give me is potentially a thousand suggestions and recommendations on YouTube. Thank you and God bless. Enjoy the rest of the reading. The card chosen for you is from the Fairy Forest, an oracle of the Wild Green World by Lucy Cavendish. Number three. Sorceress, rituals, power, will. It is time for you to act, to gather together your wisdom in an organized and structured manner and create a moment of power. This could mean a ritual to recognize the beginning of a new stage of the life cycle. Similarly, it could mean setting up an important meeting, ensuring you are correctly prepared and giving your very best throughout the opportunity before you. Gather together your energy, plan your strategy and set your goals. Choose your time and choose your tools and meet with all the power you can gather. Before this meeting, whisper to yourself of your goals and your powers. Be sure to fill yourself up with strength and conviction. Raise your head high, straighten your back, set your shoulders, and do not allow any doubt to creep in at this time. Do your homework. Be very prepared, and then when the moment comes, let all this energy and power and self-belief flow out in a very smooth manner. This will help you through a job interview, a case that needs to be made, and a gathering together allies and others who believe in you. It will also counteract any kind of self-doubt, negativity, or jealousy that may have been impeding your progress until this point. Every ritual of self-empowerment will be divinely blessed at this time. You must work at bringing back your own power, at harnessing your strong and potent will, which has until this time been neglected and underestimated. You are a being of power and commitment. Let us see what you can do when you believe in yourself at last. Bewitched. <laughs> 